Yo, what's up guys? I just want to talk about this video here. I got it paused in the background. I got some footage here, some borderline footage for the uh, beta test here for Project Fay. Um, I just want to go over a few things and tell you guys what I thought about the game so far and what changes would be pretty cool to have. Um, so as you can see, you know, I'm just kind of walking around checking out the checking out the area here I'm just walking around checking out the area here um, and I started to notice that the some of the NPCs of green dragonfly uh, red dragonfly celestial dragonfly and um, I'm not entirely sure where the direction of the creative team is going it looks like they're sort of borderline copy and pasting the uh, dragonflight concept from World of Warcraft and as far as I know, that's the original point of it uh, about 10 years ago. And um, so uh, that kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, I have noticed a lot of things uh, changing in this game in particular. Um, and a lot of them have, have to do with like mimicking um, sort of other genres, uh, also other creative assets of other games. Um, it looks like they're trying to pull like all their favorite things from their I guess is their favorite games but um, my main concern with that is you know uh, just sort of showcases a lack of creativity within the development team um, I'm not sure how small the team is or what kind of experience they do have um, but I can say you know like just implementing Dragonkin which was in vanilla World of Warcraft um, is sort of uh, it doesn't really align well with uh, <clears throat> the values I personally have as a gamer. Um, so I expected a little more out of this. So I'm looking over the characters here. And um, I'll just bring it back a little bit. Um, so the combat seems pretty smooth. Um, aside from the smart cast, I set my settings to uh, quick cast and not smart cast. And it still shows the um, indicator before using the ability. Uh, which was sort of, um, it sort of bothered me a little bit because that's pretty much what smart cast is. Uh, so I wanted to sort of like alleviate myself from the having the indicator pop up, um, you know, further decreasing my response time during a combat scenario. Uh, so one of the main characters I'm looking at here, um, Stoutheart, I just want to say, you know, like I sort of, uh, I sort of vibe with this character design. Uh, it seems pretty original, you know, to a certain degree. It's heavily inspired by, like, a Scottish Icelander, you know, um, frozen Braveheart kind of vibe. Um, it even has, like, the runes and stuff, you know. And these are real runes. These are actually real runes um, in, like, you know, runic tradition and, like, you know, Scottish, Nordic tradition. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um... So I was looking over the character here, and it says, um, you know, uh, strengths, durable, crowd control. So it means, you know, he's pretty healthy. He has a lot of crowd control. Um, and it says he has a stout heart origin. Um, and I'll go over this a bit later, but this particular stout heart character looks vastly different than the ones that they, the models they currently have in the game, which hopefully they'll be updating. Um, <clears throat> but um, he says the weaknesses is dealing damage. Now, I'm not entirely sure, like, um, you know, obviously he's a tank, so, you know, dealing damage isn't going to be his primary strong suit. Survivability will be his primary strong suit. But putting dam dealing damage as one of the weaknesses is really difficult for an unattractive for solo players, you know, because if you're not dealing enough damage, uh, it's difficult for you to kill enemies, which are already particularly difficult on a baseline uh, point of view um, and if you're trying to deal damage which is the primary way to proceed and to progress in the game um, obviously that's going to be a problem um, so you, you you probably won't see a lot of people playing this guy even though I have experience as protection warrior uh, I played protection warrior in World of Warcraft and you know if you play them properly you can deal a considerable amount of damage and I've I am a veteran World of Warcraft player I've been playing since vanilla and I played the relaunch of vanilla and classic and all that 
So I'm pretty familiar with the lore and the mechanics in general. And uh, the Protection Warrior doesn't particularly say dealing damage is a weakness, uh, but everyone knows Protection Warrior isn't as optimal at dealing damage. Now, I could imagine they probably didn't have many um, weaknesses to list for this individual because generally tanky classes are pretty, pretty all around pretty strong. So dealing damage is probably the only thing they could really think of. Uh, besides, you know, they could have put mobility, uh, but I imagine one of his abilities you could charge up and dash. So I guess mobility wasn't on the list for that because he has one ability that increases his uh, movement for just about a second. Um, now moving forward here, uh, as far as the class diesel's details are concerned, to the enemy a health guard, uh, to the enemy a health guard is a moving wall of muscle. So if he's a moving wall of muscle. He, and he's bad at dealing damage that doesn't really make sense and ice always standing between his friends and harm's way uh you will be hard pressed to ever meet warriors more loyal to their companions wielding a massive rune weapon to decimate swaths of enemies at a time and I, and if need be call upon their frost feather allies to aid them okay i like the frost feather mechanic i played i put like a hundred hours in mini masters i'm really familiar with the frost feathers and the lore and all that stuff well what lore that exists, I guess, that they, you know, barely, um, but they're like little owl birds that, you know, primarily live in, like, ice climates near the stout heart people, or, like, you know, I think Snowwall is an area, uh, Snowwall is an area for the stout heart as well that, you know, I think it's, like, the main living area, I'm not sure, they're not very clear about that, um, but, so it says, wielding a massive rune weapon, they will decimate swaths of enemies at a time. So if w one of his weaknesses is listed as dealing damage, uh, I, I guess I'm focusing and fixating on this in particular because it's just like an oversight um, that I notice. Um, it, how do they decimate swaths of enemies if, he, if he's weak at dealing damage, right? So that obviously needs to be changed. Um, you know, that, that doesn't correlate well or, you know, it needs to be a little bit more adjacent to the description and the class details they need to match up. Um, otherwise, it just shows inconsistency in the writing abilities of the creative staff. So we're going to move forward here into the lightning caller. And we'll go over the abilities a bit later in the video, but right now I'm just going to sort of give a rundown of each character. Um, the dragon caller is obviously a tiny dragon. Um, so, you know, every game has its, like, Yordle gnome race. Um, this seems to be, like, an animal, animal, uh, small race, like, similar to, um, I guess Guild Wars 2 has, like, the, uh, the elf, like, goblin-looking thing. So, um, every, you know, every game usually tries to appeal to the, the audience that prefers these type of characters. Uh, but this is also, you know, I like the design. You know, the lightning staff is interesting and everything. Um, in game, playing this character, it looks a little gaudy because he has this huge staff and these tiny wings and he's just like fluttering around and he's like a big mage and he has these huge ears. It's like a goat fairy or something like that, a goat demon fairy. But he's like a dragon kin, but it's like, you know, like dragons, you know, they don't really have ears like that. Uh, proportionately speaking and I guess it could be like a spectrum on the, the species of dragon um, but it's very interesting that he has two horns and one set of horns is lightning so they could just turn the main set of horns into lightning and remove his eyebrows uh, you know and he would look a lot more aesthetically pleasing um, also the legs being exposed like that in such like a humanoid way as a dragon kin character um, sort of is, I don't know, it's not very pleasing to look at, and it has, like, an allude to, like, a suggest, more of a suggestive theme for, like, a smaller character, but that's obviously, I guess, personal preference. Uh, like I said, Dragonkin, it's not original to this game's lore, um, and based on the character models they're implementing in the main area hub, it looks like they're literally copy and pasting the Dragonkin concept from World of Warcraft, and they ha even have red the Dragonflight sub name on the characters, which is obviously, you know, uh, 
a disappointing perspective or avenue or path that they're taking creatively um you know this is gonna that's that may push away a lot of potential players um if they come from world of warcraft and they log in and they see a whole nother ip that's not even related to blizzard or anything um with the dragon kin models just kind of like cartoonized um and themed around this world but literally looks exactly the same obviously that could be uh, a problem you know i mean i mean also the creative team has their own right to make their own choices i'm just saying that that is an oversight that could potentially push away some pretty authentic players that are looking for an authentic creative experience and um you know when they see games especially you know from like china and stuff like that they copy literally everything from the u.s um and similar situation like that and you don't see any people playing those games you know so um so we're looking at the lightning caller so obviously he calls lightning uh it's a dragon kin mage uh his strength is area damage and mobility now he has a little dash so i guess maybe you get movement speed as he like levels up or something um but having like a dash on a high cooldown is not considered mobile okay because the second you dash the the enemy can use their dash and they're on top of you immediately so you aren't any more mobile than them for instance the stalheart warrior he has a charge up dash so this guy supposedly has more mobility but if he uses his dash and the stalheart warrior uses his dash immediately then he's still right on top of the lightning caller you know so that could be a potential problem, mechanically speaking. So I would say maybe two charges of a dash on characters that have mobility listed, um, especially if characters that aren't supposed to be able to deal or listed as not damage dealing, um, maybe increase the cooldown of their dash, you know, or maybe make it like situational, you know, maybe you have to have a dot on them before you're able to a dot on an enemy before you're able to use the charge dash stuff like that it, it helps balance the combat here especially if you're going to try to implement a pvp experience you need to think about the balance of that pvp and they say lightning callers are in the class details here lightning callers are typically young dragon kin only a few hundred years old they love to tinker and try new things with their magic and have uh and most have yet to find their path in life. It is not uncommon to see them bottle lightning or experiment with mixing different kinds of magic in new ways. They love speed and mobility, dashing around between trees, and you never know where they might appear next. If anyone's played this beta so far, then this class detail does not align with the play player experience on the character. Now, maybe his cooldowns get shorter or much shorter, in future versions of the game but i'm just saying that dashing around between trees and you never know what might appear next it's very obvious where this character is at all times and you can see the orbs from a mile away um so you definitely are well aware of where they're going to appear um in addition to that his dash isn't on low enough cooldown to justify saying that they love speed and mobility um he just has sort of just like a basic dash cooldown and maybe you know a little little bit more movement speed but it's not noticeably different than playing the warrior for instance you know um the warrior is almost just as much mobility and you know maybe not as much burst damage but the warrior has consistent damage and you know with high magic resistance or something like that the warrior could really run through this guy even if he dashed away you could be right on top of him um and if you lose if you don't know where he is you're going to see the orbs um so that's a lightning caller. Uh, it says his origin is Dragonkin. I like the Dragonkin direction for this race. Um, so as far as Dragonkin is concerned, the name isn't, you know, obviously Blizzard doesn't own the name Dragonkin. Um, but it looks like, you know, Dragonkin, as far as having like a small creature race, I like the direction of this. Um, they should alternate the Dragon. They should change the Dragonkin direction that they have of the larger Dragonkins in the starting area or the, the lobby. Um, they should change the models to those to something like uh, like this, but like variations of it, you know, like maybe a red one or something. And then Dragonfly is obviously, that's a disappointing 
creative pursuit because you know having a dragon race with dragon kin or dragon flight <laughs> as the sub race obviously with like a color in front of it or like a, a name like celestial red blue green stuff like that obviously that's 100 percent copying blizzard's lore um so that's very disappointing um and maybe they wanted a dragon kin playable race you know maybe someone in the dev team really likes the dragon kin race and wow and they want to put it in this game because they really want to play dragon kin in world warcraft unfortunately they have not added dragon kin as a playable race in the game yet unless you're on a private server and you know obviously you can have the devs add that but besides that you know um the red dragon flight kind of concept or whatever that they're going in that's disappointing because i really was looking forward to an original lore experience and it looks like they're taking a lot of pieces and things from other games and everything instead of just creating their own world um and maybe they just don't have uh the creative um you know the creative power that they need um otherwise you know if that's the case they obviously need to look into probably getting more creative assets or people um, moved into the team or, or maybe an individual with the creative uh, mindset, you know, um, or like with the right perspective on this because gamers, they're not stupid. Uh, they're well aware of the, you know, we've been playing the same games for years. And so it's not going to be a secret. You can't sneak these kind of things into the, into games like this and expect players to stick around, you know? So obviously there needs to be some changes uh, so we'll move on to the next character here we have the warden um this is a wild f range wild elf ranger and i'm going to talk about a problem i have with the elf concept in particular it looks like they put a lot of work into the character design for this type of ranged character but it also looks like you know the next character we're going to look over literally has almost, you know, it's not, it pretty much looks like it's just a different color variation of this same character. Like if you look at the portraits to the right here, you'll see that the faces are eerily similar. Um, and it, they just sort of changed the hairstyle and the outfit, but they both have horns. They're both fair, skinny elves with fair skin. They have pretty much like the same nose, the same eyebrows, just a different one has a headpiece. And, um, you know, one's obviously a forest archer ranger that grows plants. So they have plants let's run. And the other one is like a healer support. But the characters are so similar. Like, like all the other characters are like incredibly different and unique. But these two particular characters are so similar. I really, really feel like they should change the direction, this, the direction of one of these characters to make them more unique like um i don't know change the the shape the body type or something like that you know it, you can have a support class that's a little bit thicker than the small thin limp uh, you know lanky ranger class you know stuff like that uh, but anyway let's go over the warden uh it looks like this is a wild elf ranger wild elf is obviously the origin race um it shrinks his single target damage and weaknesses is area damage, low durability, and crowd control. Um, so I like this. This description aligns well with the class. I played it, and um, the character is really good at uh, range, obviously range damage, and it has a few AOE attacks. Now, I wouldn't say that it excels at area damage when, you know, only one of the abilities really hits or penetrates all the targets on the screen. I think that's her ultimate. Um... And I don't even know, I think her ultimate still stops at the first target. Um, so as far as like area damage is concerned, I'm not entirely sure how, you know, how they plan to implement that. Um, but the strength and single target damage. Um, so yeah, she does definitely excel at the single target damage. Um, and she, you know, obviously does lack in the area damage. But as far as class details are concerned, where it says the warden lives most of their lives in the wild, befriending the creatures and the plants of the forest while honing their deadly accuracy with a bow. They are honor bound to protect the sacred woodlands around Lorethel and do so with deadly efficiency. In the common tongue, they get the forest saying the whispering woods, as the last thing you will ever hear is the whisper like sound the arrows make. Okay, cool. 
you know um the arrows you know obviously that's a really good theme this character is very cohesive it a lot the char gameplay and the description and the origin everything aligns really well the characters simple characters good for beginners uh, especially you come from like a ad carry class from league of legends and stuff like that and they should really improve on the attack move mechanic um also uh with the tooltips uh the tooltips don't really stick around long enough for you to like cover over the highlighted areas because there's some highlight areas that they don't cover they don't explain and um and i understand this is the testing phase right i understand this is why i'm giving the feedback um but if you're able if the if the tooltip sort of lingered or was in like the bottom right hand corner of the screen similar to like i guess uh world of warcraft when you hover over a tooltip um it's not directly over your toolbar right it's over in the bottom right but what if it lingered just a little while uh, just, you know, just maybe two or three seconds more to give you a chance to put your cursor over it to hover over that the highlighted areas in the tooltip so you can get more details on that specific to that specific topic. You know, for instance, if it says it activates an ability and this ability does this, that, and other, but you don't know how much damage the ability does. You don't know if there's a cooldown on the ability. You don't know um, if there's an area of effect on the ability. And some of them do have area of effects and it's not listed in the tooltip. So I would just say, you know, give a little bit more information to the players. Players love to play around and to, you know, theory craft, these sort of things. And so I think it'd be a good idea to move forward with a little bit more detail in the tooltips, even though you already have a lot of detail and you have like the ability power and attack damage like League of Legends does. Uh, but if, if you were able to take that one step closer, if the player was interested in that, just like Baldur's Gate 3, and I understand, you know, maybe this is a stretch because Baldur's Gate 3 really, really, like, brought the standard of gaming up a lot. But it's similar to that. In Baldur's Gate 3, if you have a tooltip, you can hit the Alt key, and it, it keeps the tooltip on your screen. And you can hover over different keywords in the tooltip to get more details on that keyword so that you can have a deeper understanding of the game you play, and you can play it better. And so that's the Warden. <clears throat> So we're going to, oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the druid. Now, the druid, you know, still has the plants around it. It's a druid, cool. But I understand the plants around the warden because you have the plants that increase your attack speed and all this stuff. Um, but it, if we're talking about the druid, you know, the plants are cool too, but she really only summons the plants like Zyra from Ling. Like Zyra has a plant mechanic. Uh, but you have to place the plants or you have a passive that places the plant seeds and then your abilities awaken the seeds and, you know, obviously that. Um, now, that's an interesting mechanic. If you're going to copy anything, that would be something you could copy. You know, people aren't going to really be too riled up about that. Um, but I feel like it would also add a bit more burst damage um, to the plant control, like the, the area control that this character has. Um if you were able to control when the seeds activate or stack them up in an area, that would be a really interesting and fun mechanic to have. Um, in League of Legends, you just have a limited amount of space and a limited amount of time to play around with that. But in like one of these games, in an extraction type game, it'd be cool to set traps here and there, uh, stuff like that, ambushes for solo players, make it easy for them to get a pick if they need to on a team, to take out a team, stuff like that if you're a solo druid. You know, and I, I would say, like, you know, try to make classes less. If you're going to make an extraction game, you're going to have a lot of solo players. So I would make classes less specific and a little bit more versatile than they are. So, um, like, you know, all classes should have the potential to deal damage. All classes should have the potential to regenerate health. All the classes should have the potential for damage mitigation or avoidance. And... um I think that only a few of those classes, only a few of the classes here um, have that versatility that, you know, that would be nice to have in a game. It would make it feel a lot better to play. Um, as far as the art direction is concerned, it looks great, it looks beautiful. But this character, I understand it's a, a wild elf as well, um, just like the, the, you know, the ranger or the warden. Um, but they look literally identical they're literally they literally look like the same character just in a different outfit with a different hairstyle um 
and different horns. One character horns looks like tree limbs. The other character horns looks like, you know, ram horns. But, you know, I mean, I would say that they are the same race, I would assume. But I'm just trying to say, I'm just, I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe make the characters look more different. Um, cause you only have eight character slots and, um, you're, you don't even have, you're, you're missing three of them. And so you only have five playable characters right now. And two out of five of the characters, um, their silhouette looks almost identical. So like, for instance, the only difference is one has a bow. If you were looking at the silhouette, you, you would see it. One has a bow and one has a staff. So obviously, you know, there should be some improvements on the, the individuality of these two characters, especially if they're two different characters, maybe not have the same race, maybe give an opportunity to, you know, there's, there could be, you could make an Empyrean, you could make the warden an Empyrean archer. Um, you don't have an Empyrean character in here yet. And an Empyrean crossbowman would fit that aesthetic pretty well. Um, but I'm saying that the warden, I like the, I like the character design of the warden. The warden looks great. I really like it. Um, so, but I just feel like the druid and the warden just way too similar and the team should brainstorm on a way to make the silhouettes, um, a bit more individualistic. That's all I'm saying. Um, but <clears throat> it looks like her strengths are shields, area control, uh, weakness and her weaknesses are target control. So she's good at casting shields. She's good at, you know, controlling an area. Um, but she only has one area, like one really, really solid area ability and it roots enemies, which is nice, but it's the cooldowns a little too high to justify her that being a strength, right? Um, cause even though you root enemies, you have a team, maybe it gives your team you know, obviously the opportunity to capitalize on the lack of mobility in that moment. But I'm saying like, again, the warrior, even though he doesn't have like a direct snare, he has, you can get a two stuns off in a team fight if you work his abilities correctly. And he has a massive AOE ability that can add up to be considerable damage over the course of a fight because he does have that survivability. And so, you know, just having a snare in your stuff and maybe some a damage tick a damage over time tick it may not even add up to the potential that the the warrior has with his uh dash aoe so i'm just saying you know maybe put a little bit more damage on the area control that the druid does have because her kit obviously is a little one-sided is more closer to support and the versatility is very important when it comes to playing an extraction type game that's why I like ex Escape for Tarkov and stuff like that. Everybody's on a balanced playing field. And when you go to extract, you know, everybody starts off generally with the same amount of equipment. You know, obviously, there'll be some opportunities to have better equipment. But gen generally, everybody has the same build and everything like that. So it makes it easy to balance that game. Um, but for this type of game, you want to still add a, a level of versatility that sort of aligns well with the extraction concept. And so that way, you know, extraction games are really fun to play solo. Um, and it looks and it feels like whenever you queue for solo, you get less, you know, <clears throat> you get less uh, rewards. The enemies drop less gold or items and stuff. And it's like the players being punished, which doesn't make sense to me. The players shouldn't be punished. <clears throat> the players shouldn't be punished for trying to just play with themselves you know play by themselves and um i don't think that you know obviously it looks like they're trying to discourage solo play which is really weird um but um so we're going over here and um uh, the class details it says druids live in harmony with the natural world focusing on their efforts and shielding and, re and restoring the ancient forest and ensuring balance of the life that uh, life is maintained they are masters of life magic and powerful supports they can even call upon the wild of the forest to fight with them that's really cool um let's see here uh that's that's a really cool description and everything um it lines well with the character concept it's really cohesive with the character um but again you know the character looks nearly identical besides a few color and armor variations you know uh as it does the uh, to the warden
And so here we have the word seeker. Um, I guess that's how you say it. Weird seeker. Weird word seeker. You know, obviously like a Scottish accent or something like that. Stout heart origin, which is an uh, which is an origin. Um, obviously, you know, inspired by the Scottish folk or Nordic traditions. Um, now strength is durable. Single target damage. You know, obviously, uh, uh, she excels at that. And weakness is mobility. That's true. She doesn't really get to. She doesn't really have a lot of movement or mo opportunities for mobility, which could be highly detrimental when playing against literally any of any of the other classes which is probably why you see this character play the least is because all the other classes have a lot more versatility and and utility and there's just like a raw damage dps class so you know obviously it comes with its ups and downs but like i said versatility you know this character could be a beloved character if you just add a little bit more versatility to the mobility kit, like say for instance, she gets, she, she does f doing 40 to 50% of the target's health and damage, um, gives you like a uh, shadow step, right? You know, shadow steps used in menu masters, um, and a lot of cards and stuff like that. And so the next attack you use your, the target you have, you jump behind the target. And so like that, that could be, you know, sort of twisted into like a stout heart theme where it's like a snow step, or something like that, you know, very simple, very simple. And but she's rewarded for being getting in the fight. This character needs to be rewarded for getting in the fight because so these characters do so much damage that um, it'll be very hard for her to like have any mobility at all. And if she's if you run into a team as a solo player, that's going to be really difficult for you to pro to deal with that, you know, without some type of versatility with that. Even if you had a team, it wouldn't be overpowered because you have to do damage to get the the shadow step or snow step concept right you have to do damage to get that and i just feel like that would be a really good way to reward players for playing this character instead of you know obviously discouraging them from the lack of mobility and having them play the other classes um the description says each word seeker is a super uh superlative warrior with no concern for their own safety as they rip through enemies and blow uh with blow after blow from their rune carved weapons driven by a terrible oath to hunt and fight the biggest and most dangerous foes they attempt to redeem themselves for a past offense forged in a never-ending combat the oath is all that matters to the word seeker and to even consider anything else would bring further shame so this character you know obviously they've been fine if they're trained in such a such so much pressured pressurized fighting environments and sort of they come out of this this sort of like a spartan like uh training regiment you'd think they'd have more mobility because spartans are highly mobile and uh if you spend a lot of time in combat you obviously would have a good idea of how to navigate the the battle um the battle scene and so I feel like there should be some mobility implemented in this character. I feel like this character has a lot of potential, but without like any mechanic, mobility mechanic, I feel like all characters should have a mobility mechanic, uh, um, an opportunity to regenerate health or mitigate damage, and um, an opportunity to get away or to get into a fight, um, or an opportunity to deal damage in some way. So, you know, obviously this character might not be paid as much as the other ones, especially if they're getting kited around and you know league of legends players are probably going to be playing this game the most and so they're going to be playing the range classes and so this the character the experience for, for people who play this character is going to be essentially pretty negative um you know and so i think you should bump up the power of these character the melee characters a little more and make them more fun because like even in world of warcraft and even in league of legends you know, the melee characters have a way to grab the closed gap closers is a specific term terminology used, but they have a way to grab the enemy, jump to the enemy, you know, speed up to get to the enemy. There's not a single melee class in League of Legends that doesn't have a mobility um, aspect to them. Just to be clear, you know, I just want to put that out there. And, you know, it'll be detrimental to not have that. There's a reason they give that to their melee class, because if they didn't have a mobility or any way to close the gap, no one would play the class because it would just be generally weak and unsatisfying to play. And 
it would be a bad decision to play if you want to perform well in your games and perform well for your team. You want to play the best classes or, you know, the, obviously the most versatile classes because you're in a team. So, yeah, um, that pretty much covers the character uh, overview of Project Faye. I'm going to go over the abilities in the next video. So go ahead and tune in to the next video and uh, let me know what you think about these characters. Let me know what you think about the game so far. If you've played the beta or if you haven't played, let me know if you want to get into it. I can get you a beta key. So just go ahead and, and leave a comment in the description. Tell me what you think. Um, if there's anything else I can't help you with, then I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning in, and remember, we're in this game and journey together. Stay awesome, and i catch you on the flip side. Vox TV, out.